What is going on guys? My name is Damien. Welcome back. Bringing you my review for the season premiere of Arrow Season 4. And what an episode it was. I really enjoyed this episode and I actually liked it more than the episode of The Flash last night. Now that is something you would have not heard me say last season for both shows. I was very vocal in the fact that I really liked The Flash a lot more than Arrow. And that was mainly due to the fact that Arrow Season 3 stumbled a lot, in my opinion. And I know a lot of other people share that opinion as well. So it was nice to see that for Season 4, coming out of the gate, the first episode, they seemed to at least make somewhat of a statement. I felt more impressed, and at least I was buying the idea of the villain this time around when I really didn't feel Ra's al Ghul last season. Damien Dark played to perfection by Neil McDonough, who is a pretty good actor. He is really just known for being in many shows, many appearances on screen, different movies and whatnot. He is kind of all around the place, doing different things. So to see him here, this is great. I'm really interested to see how they're going to explore his character. And actually in the comics, uh, this is some little little insight for you. He, at least Hive, is actually connected to the creation of killer frost i don't know how if they plan in any way to connect the caitlin snow character on the flash in that way that would be really cool if they did something like that uh but in the comics that is at least one of the official ways she becomes killer frost so uh that's just a side note now the episode had a lot of oliver and felicity moments and let me touch on that of course uh, oliver and felicity everyone knows i'm not the biggest fan of the two of them i've made many comments against them but i still enjoy their relationship when handled properly and i thought this episode was for the most part pretty good because it established one thing they just can't run off and play house for six months realistically he is still a hero he has to be there felicity is still someone who is a computer wizard she loves helping the team she needs to be there as well this is the life that they lead now will they try to be together and do this of course we'll see how it goes the way the episode ended i'm not exactly sure what to what to do with that but i'm going to get there in a, in a second i'm also going to do a separate video talking about that because there's a lot of different theories you can run through with this so the episode was really good I like the fact that Damien Dark just kind of walked in and told everyone, hey, the city's dying, let it die, this is just the way things are going to happen. He also is not af not afraid of anything. He has that, the way he's walking around with his suit, he really sells the idea, and he's really doing a much better job than Ra's al Ghul did last season. It's just, I forgot the name of the actor that played Ra's al Ghul, but he needs to take some notes because Neil McDonough is really, really great stand-up performance for him as far as his as his first episode so uh, that was great but the Oliver and Felicity scenes let's do a breakdown they've been away I figured the show would do a six month time jump since the flash announced that uh, right before it started I, I was watching some uh, an interview or something like that and they mentioned that so I figured Arrow would have to follow suit because the universes are connected and you have to really kind of keep the timeline going so I figured it makes perfect sense for Arrow to do it because the way it ended with Oliver and Felicity leaving, it would make perfect sense for them to have that time away so we don't have to really address that and they come back. And now here we are. So it actually reminds me a lot of the summer that Damon and Elena had in the Vampire Diaries. That's random, I know, but uh, a lot of shows do this. It's just the way, uh, it's an easy way rather to kind of build a relationship between characters or build and flesh out two characters in general. So they did that and now they're back. We're not really going to get to see what they did. Maybe we'll get some flashbacks if it comes to that, but they had their time away, they enjoyed it, and they saw that thinking about schools and all of that really isn't what lies in, in the future for them. It's just not what lies in store. It's There's there's a bigger picture, and they need to kind of come to, come to grips with that. So the whole couple of scenes with Oliver trying to propose, I thought... That was a little rushed, I want to say, because they hadn't officially established that time jump just yet. It was mentioned a little while after that, because when you kind of, it's one of the first scenes in the first 20 minutes of the show, so you're, when you see him pull this ring out, you're just like, wait, wait, hold on, what is going on here? Now, 
After considering the six months, it's perfectly normal for him to want to propose because they've known each other for much longer than that, but we all knew that wasn't going to happen. I think it's possible for them to have a proposal scene down the line, but it's going to be put on hold for quite a long time. Damien Dark is supposed to be a much more important villain in the Arrow universe than even Ra's al Ghul was. He should at least be more impressive with the things that he does. He should be the kind of guy that you're really afraid of. And I, ne I never really felt that with Ra's al Ghul too much last season. He really fell off after the first few episodes. After episode 9, he really just kind of faded away. So we'll see exactly what happens. Star City is coming back. Everyone's still looking for Ray Palmer. Obviously, we know he's not dead thanks to new shows that will announce cast members and really give away spoilers with things like that. So we'll see how it all plays out. I really liked the fact that Team Arrow was kind of doing things on their own without Oliver there. I like that they're also acknowledging the fact that what Diggle had to deal with, with his family, really caused a rift between him and Oliver because they could have easily just swept it under the rug and just kind of moved on from it. But having him still be aware of that and dealing with that was great also. Really, really solid episode. It was complete all around. I liked the new Arrow suit, the Green Arrow suit. It was great. I also liked the fact that he made the speech announcing that he is officially the Green Arrow. His ongoing battle with darkness, the, the conversations he had with Captain Lance, and Diggle as well. Things that are said. These things resonate with Oliver because him as a character, he has to He's always been the darker and grittier character, which is why he's always been similar, rather, to Batman in many ways, which is why I always took an issue with the Felicity relationship and seeing what they're doing with it. I am curious now to see just how they're going to handle it moving forward. Now, coming to the end of the episode, which is the biggest thing that everyone's going to want to talk about, at the end of the episode, you see a flash forward of six months where Oliver and Barry Allen, the Flash, of course, are visiting a grave. We don't get to see this grave, but the person had obviously died and it was someone close to him. So who is that person? There's so many theories I could come up with right now. The first obvious theory that I think everyone's going to kind of jump at is it's Felicity. And why is that? Well, it really comes down to how sad he was, the fact that Damian Dark is the big bad for the season, and he's rumored to be Felicity's dad. Now, if he is indeed her father, it's very possible. Now, it could definitely be two other characters in mind. I could see it being Thea, and I could see it being Laurel if they wanted to go completely out of the comic books and just do whatever they want. But realistically, there's only two options. It's either Thea or Felicity, and we'll have to wait and see how it plays out with that because that doing a flash forward like that was actually surprising I wasn't expecting that one either and I guess it'll really come down to if they really want to kill off one of the most popular characters on the show in Felicity then they can definitely do it it's n it wouldn't be the first time it's happened I fully expect it to happen because I will always see a character like her kind of holding him back from being the true hero that he is and uh, we'll just have to see We'll have to see how it plays out. The characters are built differently. It's not like Barry and Iris, where the Speed Force is so connected to the Barry Iris relationship and him accomplishing, you know, greater feats is sometimes linked to her. And their relationship is built in a completely different way. Oliver was always the Green Arrow character was always built on a darker, more mature type of setting. The writing was always a lot grittier and darker. So. We'll see. We'll see how it all goes. You know, I'm I'm all for it. The season, the episode was great, and I hope the season continues that type of momentum. Obviously, the first episode is always a lot more big and compelling than some of the other episodes because there's a lot of episodes. It's not like Game of Thrones where we have ten awesome episodes or any of those shows like that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow night for the Vampire Diaries. Thank you for watching, listening. Leave a like, share, subscribe if you're new, and check out my other two or my other videos on my channel. And I will see you guys later. My name is Damien.